grateful to God for the privilege we have to, to gather again in his presence. For those who might be joining us again for the first time, I would like to welcome you to this period of study, of engaging with God's word, of gaining strength, of finding the words of life to carry us on. Again, to all of us, we continue to encourage you to join us online every Wednesday as we meet, except once a month when we gather on site. And for July, that will be the first Wednesday in July when we will gather on site in church. By God's grace, it will be a time that is worth being here with the other brethren to be in touch with heaven. Tonight, I'm especially pleased as we continue our study of questions from the Bible of things that are asked of us or that we ask of God in the series titled Queries. Before we engage with tonight's study, let's say a word of prayer and then we'll get in. Father, thank you for the privilege of life, for the opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you for your word which you make available to us again and again. I pray tonight, dear Father, that as I lead your people in your word, in the study of your word, at the entrance of your word, we give light in darkness, to give understanding in confusion, that your word of God will bring life, it will bring encouragement, strength in every way in the name of Jesus. I ask to God that your word will truly serve to further your, your place in our lives, your strengthening in our spirit in the name of jesus thank you eternal father in jesus name i have prayed amen amen praise the lord so by god's grace tonight we are studying queries we are studying queries number six queries number six queries part six if you like and i'm excited to be teaching God's word tonight, I titled this part, Aches and Aces. Trust in troubled times. Aches and Aces. Trust in troubled times. And the question we are really trying to answer comes out of Exodus number 14, beginning in verse 10 and running on to the very end. But you know in Exodus chapter 14, Beginning in verse 10, the Bible tells us about the question that the Israelites asked of Moses. Why did you bring us here to come and die? Why did you bring us out? Did we not tell you that you should have left us in Egypt? Living in times like this relates very much to what was going on with the children of Israel. A period of aches, a period that we can also ace what we are going through. You see, as God's children, life can be challenging. Sometimes, even when we appear to have won a victory like the Israelites did, the enemy continues to bother us. After the children of Israel witnessed the ten plagues in Egypt, after they saw the mighty hand of God that brought them release and victory, and they left the nation of Egypt. The Bible tells us that the enemy did not leave them. What they saw and experienced in Egypt was an incredible victory. It was the mighty hand of God at work. So they enjoyed the liberty of God and they were just beginning to adjust to freedom, to liberty. They were just beginning to appreciate the sense of being free people and not slaves. And then Satan showed up. You see, Satan never gives up. Evil doers never give up. They continue to seek to do evil to us. The enemy will keep trying to come back. The enemy will keep trying to take us back to the place of slavery. In times like that, we ask questions. Our hearts become troubled. We ache. We have pain. Our concerns grow. Why is this happening? So we have aches, pains, sorrows, troubles that seem to be in our lives, in our hearts. These aches representing our pains, our sorrows, our troubles 
make us to wonder and ask questions. Why? So what can we do when we are faced with situations such as this? How do we ace the situation? And by ace, I'm saying that how do we sail through? How do we become champions? In other words, how do we get victory, triumph, success? When you say someone has aced something, you are saying they have conquered, they have triumphed. I pray that you and I will triumph in Jesus' name. You and I will win in Jesus' name. So, what lessons can we learn to deal with our aches so that we can ace them? What are the things that we need to pay attention to? From this account in the life of the children of Israel, I'd like to share with you a few thoughts. First, the terrorists. The terrorist. Exodus number 14, verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. So, terrorists. I need not define the word terrorist to us, but terrorists abound. The Bible says, the children of Israel, having left Egypt, suddenly looked up. I presume that when the Bible says they looked up, it means they became aware, they became conscious. They became sensitized that something was happening. They must have seen some signs. The dust as the chariots, the dust as the soldiers, the dust as the army of Egypt approached them. So the Bible says, Pharaoh approached them. The Egyptians marched after them. Look at God's word. Pharaoh approached. The Egyptians marched after them. Therefore, they were terrified. Pharaoh and Egypt were a representation of the worst nightmare of Israel. Pharaoh and Egypt were the symbol of persecution, the symbol of oppression. To Israel, Egypt was pain and sorrow. To Israel, Egypt was an ache that encompassed many others. Beloved, there are pharaohs around us as well. Egypt continues to march to attack. Slave masters who do not want us to be free. The wicked lie in wait to do evil. Terrorists, pharaohs, Egyptians, all seeking to bring us pain and sorrow. You and I must be aware. You and I must be sensitive. As Pharaoh approached, the children of Israel looked up. As Pharaoh approached, the children of Israel became conscious, aware. Sometimes, it's the big Pharaoh, the big man with the authority, the terrorist who can do great things according to his own plans. Egyptians, foot soldiers, the army, forces on ground, you need to be sensitive. You need to be aware. You need to be conscious of the fact that these things exist. Terrorists are real. It is foolishness at any time to act with indifference concerning terrorists. Around your home, around your business, around your job, around your church, in the church, around your community, in the community, there are terrorists. Our nation is bedeviled by terrorists of all kinds. Spiritual terrorists. People who are seeking to take away the very fabric of our spirituality. The world is beset by spiritual terrorists. 
people who are coming against us because of our faith in the Lord, because of our conviction of truth, of righteousness, of what justice is. They are political terrorists. Our nation certainly knows that are political terrorists. People who are using political power to oppress the rest of the nation. In the north, in the east, in the west, in the south. Political terrorists. They are economic terrorists who consistently pursue and come against us. We see them all around. So they are terrorists. And you need to be conscious to be aware. May God help you to never forget that there are terrorists around you. I pray that God will address every terrorist in your life in Jesus' name. Whether they be spiritual, whether they be economic, whether they be political, whether they be family. The second thing from our text tonight that I would like us to pay attention to is the subject of terrors. Not only are there terrorists, there are terrors that beset our lives. Exodus number 14, verse 10. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. You see, there are terrors that also beset our lives. The Bible tells us that the Israelites noted that Pharaoh and Egypt were coming, and they became terrified. The word terrified means to be afraid. It means to be frightened. This word also means to be intimidated. To be put in a state of feeling great distress. To have a deep concern for a deep concern of pain about a circumstance. In effect, even though Israel was not yet in a problem, they were already intimidated. You see, beloved, terrorists promote fear. Terrors bring us to the place where we become scared stiff. Fear is a major tool that terrorists use. So terror brings fear. Fear muffles. Fear muzzles. Fear mitigates. When we are filled with fear, when we become terrified, frightened, it muffles our voices. It muzzles us out of the plan of God. It mitigates our capacity to approach heaven. Beloved, terrors, fears, they contain us. Fear puts us in, in a situation where we are contained. We are unable to be the best. They constrict us. Fear causes confusion. It makes us to concede that which God has done and is doing in our lives. Fear, when we are terrified, is a problem. The children of Israel, people who had seen the hand of God, who had experienced his mighty move, became terrified. They became so scared that they were muffled. I pray that every terror that's in our lives, the Lord will address in Jesus' name. The fear of failure. The fear of sickness, the fear of death, the fear of loss, the fear of death. Many of us live in fear. The fear of abandonment, the fear that will not finish what God has led us to start, the fear that suddenly evil will come upon us. Fear muffles. Fear muzzles. Fear mitigates. Fear does not allow us to express ourselves the fullest way that God would have us do. Fear can keep us choked. It can keep us consumed by distraction. Fear. So there are terrors around us. Sickness. Human beings, situations, circumstances. I pray tonight, every terror that surrounds us, 
the Lord will take away in Jesus' name. Every terror that appears to be holding us back, to be muffling us, to be muzzling us out and mitigating us, God will intervene in Jesus' name. Not only do we need to pay attention to the subject of terrorists and to the issues of terrors. In this passage, we also see the subject of tears. We see the subject of tears. Exodus number 14 verse 10 again. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. The Israelites cried out to the Lord. The word cry here means to call out loudly. Sometimes that word is used to mean to call out loudly because you fear that something is at a distance, is too far from you. It also means to call out for help. When in the face of a challenge or a hard situation, so we can say that the Israelites were calling out because they felt that God was far off. They were calling out because they had a hard situation confronting them. Beloved, when we have aches, sometimes we feel like God is far off. We call out to him and we should call out to him. Cry out. Even if you think he's too far, cry out to him. Call out to him. In your tears. Don't let your tears keep you from him. Let your tears drive you to him. When terrorists and terrors approach us, we have aches, we have pains, we cry, we weep. Never, ever stay quiet. Be willing to reach out to the throne of grace and cry out loudly. Even if you feel that God is far off. Reach out to him and scream if you have to. Cry if you have to. Weep. Let your tears not be tears of abandonment. But tears requesting for help. I pray tonight. Whatever your tears are. Whatever your pains are. God will hear in the name of Jesus. The fourth thing that I'd like to draw your attention to is that sometimes when we're dealing with aches and we want to ace the situation, not only do we have to deal with the issue of terrorists and the issue of terrors and the issue of tears, we have to go through a period of trial. We go through a period of trial. Exodus number 14 verse 11 to 12. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. When we ache, it can be a very long trial. Can I make a distinction tonight? A trial is different from temptation. Temptations can be trials. But trials are not bound by the same definition of temptations. Trials are tough times, tough days. When the enemy seeks to challenge our conviction... Trials are seasons and periods when all that we believe to be true, the enemy is trying to convince us it is not so. When we are faced with trials, we must be careful. The children of Israel were faced with trial here. And the Bible tells us, they began to say, was it because there were no graves in Egypt? Why did you bring us out here to die in the desert? Why, why, why? What have you done by bringing us? Didn't we tell you to please leave us? Let's be slaves in Egypt. You see, when there are trials, we often ask questions. Why? 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 Sometimes we even long for what was. Sometimes when we have asked God for healing, and healing has taken place, pain comes back. And we're asking, why did I ever think I was healed? 
were asking, why did I think that God had taken care of my situations? When we are dealing with trials, there are three things I'd like you to pay attention to and to handle very carefully. Accusations, assumptions, and attacks. Sometimes when we ache, we make accusations. Even those who are standing with us, we accuse them. Sometimes when we are facing trials, we attack. We attack anyone. We attack everyone. We even accuse God and attack God. Be careful with assumptions. When we are dealing with trials, we often make assumptions. Assumptions that God does not care anymore. Assumptions that people have abandoned us. Assumptions that friends have neglected us. Assumptions that no one truly loves us. In trials, let's be careful. God, why? How could you let this happen? You see, tough times often make us to begin to accuse, to attack, and to assume. I pray tonight, every confusion in your heart, every trial you are passing through, the Lord will give you grace and strength in Jesus' name. The fifth thing, the fifth thing tonight takes us from the place of aches to the place where we become people who aches our pains. So the fifth thing tonight is trust. Trust. Exodus number 14, 13 to 16. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Beloved, as we go from the place of pain, of aches, because of terrorists, because of terrors, as we deal with the issue of our tears, and as we walk through the period of trial, we must come to the place of trust. Moses encouraged the people. Moses encouraged the people. He said to them, do not be afraid. Stand firm. You see, you and I need to be able to appreciate the need for trust. Even in tough times, trust is critical. Moses encouraged the people. Moses told them to stand firm. He pointed them to God. He said, you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. Moses told the people, the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. I say to you tonight, whatever your situation is, stand firm. Do not be afraid. You will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. I say to you that the Egyptians you see today, the terrorists and the terrors that confront you today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Trust. Trust. As a believer, in these tough times, you need to be an encourager to people. You need to be a faith raiser. You need to be a joy giver. As a believer, living during these tough times, you and I must become a reason for others to be encouraged, a reason for others to be strengthened, a reason for others to have joy, a reason for others to see their faith lifted. Moses encouraged the people. Do not demotivate. Do not be a faith killer. Do not, I don't know if, 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 if the word is right, do not be a depressor. 
don't be a reason for people to lose faith. Don't repress people. Don't depress people. Can I encourage you tonight to trust God? Don't be a minimizer. Don't reduce the capacity of God to nothing. Don't be a magnifier. Don't, don't make issues bigger than they are. It's true. Sickness is bad. Cancer is bad. But don't magnify it. Don't also be a person who is causing people to misplace their trust. Moses encouraged the people. He pointed them to God. Don't make people put their trust in the wrong things. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Don't make people misplace their trust. The ministry of encouragement is key. In the past few weeks, myself and my family and friends and the church have experienced the ministry of encouragement. There were people who were like Moses to us, to me. In times like this with people going through different things, we all need to be encouragers. But I want you to notice that Moses just did not encourage the people. He wasn't just an encourager speaking by himself. Moses also did something else. He listened to God. In that passage, the Bible says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses. You and I need to listen to God. We need to listen to the chief shepherd. We need to hear God speaking to us as the pastor speaks to us. So our spirit man needs to be open to hear God speaking. Listen to what God said. He said, why are you crying out to me? Do you know my interpretation of that? God was saying, hey, tears are not enough. Why are you crying out to me? Yes, you can cry, but tears are not enough. Open your eyes. God said to Moses, tell the Israelites to move on. I hear God saying, go forward. Don't stay stuck in that place of pain and aches. God said, raise your staff and stretch your hand. Action. You must be willing to take a step of faith forward. And when you raise your hand over the sea to divide the water so that Israel can go through the sea on dry ground, I hear God promising divine action, divine support. So you take action, raise your staff, stretch out your hand, and God says, I will divide the waters, and the Israelites will go through the sea on dry ground. Divine support. Tonight I pray for you. Tonight I pray for you. That you will put your trust in God. That you will put your faith in God. I pray for you that you will be strengthened in your inner man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will guide your path. They that put their trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. You see, every time you are unable to trust in the Lord, to believe what God is saying, what you are doing is to trust in something else. The capacity of the terrorist, the potency of the terrors. And for such people, the Bible says, woe is he that puts his trust in man. I pray tonight that your trust level will rise in the name of Jesus. The sixth thing I'd like to point your heart to is time. Exodus number 14, 19 to 20. Then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them. Coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel, throughout the night the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Folks, when we are trusting God, we need to appreciate the fact that God is at work in that time. Time for us is calculated by hours and minutes and seconds, days and weeks, months and years. But whenever we come before God, 
we might not see the very action of God. Guess what? God is at work. As the Israelites received instruction, encouragement from Moses, and instruction on what to do, the Bible says, while God was saying all these things, and having said them, the angel of the Lord moved between Israel and Egypt. Beloved, God is at work. His angel is moving between you and the terrorists. God put darkness between Egypt and Israel. Light between Egypt and Israel. I see God putting light between you and terrorists. I see darkness overwhelming the wickedness that is around you. But Israel possibly did not realize this. Sometimes, in the sequence of time, we are not able to tell that God is at work. In the face of challenges, we often think God is silent. But listen, the angel moved. God is moving. To the Israelites, the movement of the cloud that the Bible speaks about will appear to be normal. Because remember, at night, there would be movement of this same cloud. And it will become fire, giving them light. What they didn't know was that this light that they were receiving from this cloud at night made darkness on the other side and put light on their side. In effect, God was already at work. God had ensured that during that night when Israel was most vulnerable, the army that they had sensed was approaching. The Pharaoh and Egypt that they had seen before, God put a marker between them. Beloved, in the face of challenges, in the face of tough times, difficulties, I want you to know that God is at work even if you can't interpret it. Even if it looks like the normal cloud that had been guiding and leading them by day, even if it looked like the normal cloud that gave them light at night, God is at work in that time. Tonight I pray that the angel of God will move between you and the terrorist. I pray that God will put light to guide you and protect you and give darkness to the kingdom of the enemy. As I close tonight, I'd like to assure you that there is triumph coming your way. Exodus number 14, 23 and 25 and 30 and 31, you could read the whole thing, but... For this purpose, let me read 23 to 25 and then 30 to 31. The Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptian said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Hallelujah. Beloved, I see triumph your way. The same cloud, the same cloud that worked for Israel, worked against Egypt. Beloved, I see God working for you. I see God acting in your behalf. Egypt, in spite of all this, pursued Israel. Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the Red Sea. But you know what? When God is on your case, the enemy is always in trouble. God allowed them to follow. But eventually, God started to act against them. Exodus number 14 30 to 31, the Bible said that day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. When the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. Beloved, Pharaoh went after Moses. <laughs> Egypt went after Israel. You see, that's why this verse 30 and 31 are important. Because the Bible says, the people put their trust in God and in the servant, 
Moses. Pharaoh went after Moses. Egypt pursued Israel. Soldiers went after civilians. Armed men went after unarmed men. Beloved, God moved. God gave them confusion. God jammed the wheels of their chariots. God fought against them. Tonight, victory is coming. I see God moving in your behalf. I see God giving the enemy confusion in your family, in your life, in your business, in our nation. God jammed the wheels of their chariots. I see God jamming the, ch the wheels of the chariots of the wicked. I see God jamming the wheels of the chariots of the wicked people in the land. I see God fighting against them. God fought against Egypt. God is fighting against those who are terrorists in your life. Beloved, victory is coming. Victory will come. Victory is sure. God is fighting for you. God will fight for you. Tonight, I'd like to encourage you. In the face of aches, you can ace. I believe God will address the terrorist. Will take care of the terrors. I believe God will wipe away your tears. I believe he will give you strength in the midst of your trials. Trust him, because in due time, you will triumph. Bow your head, and let's pray. What do you hear God say to you tonight? Perhaps you have a lot of aches. Perhaps you are going through some pains right now. It's not surprising, it's not new. It's not pleasant, but it's a reality of life. Why don't you talk with God and say, Father, Please help me in this period. This aches that I'm going through. This pain, this sorrow. Lord, I'm crying to you. Go ahead and talk with the Lord tonight. It might be tough to put your trust in him. You might be shaking, wavering in your faith. But tonight, you can turn to him again and say, Father, I put my trust in you. Begin to receive the triumph of God. As you declare the power of God Almighty. Lord, move in my family. Move in my life. Move in our church. Move in our nation. Move in the businesses of members of this church. Move, O oh God, in the lives of those who are part of this study tonight. Oh God, move in the homes where sickness is ravaging. Move, oh God, where there are terrorists oppressing the people. Move, oh God, every single situation that represents aches in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you begin to jam the chariots of the enemy. So confusion in the camp of the wicked. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you will clog their wheels. Let them be confused in the matters that they are bringing. Father, give us victory like you gave Israel. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord God of heaven is doing you good tonight. I'm excited about what God has said to us this evening. Please be encouraged, be strengthened in your faith. The Lord bless you. Just before I go, I'd like to encourage you to please give an offering in honor of the Lord, in support of the work that we do as church. Our account numbers are scrolling on your screens right now. Please go ahead. If you need to give a tithe, if you need to give an offering, a seed, if you'd like to support the work of our missions or the work of our building, all of those accounts are displayed for you. Feel free as the Lord lays on your heart right now or hereafter to give to the work of God. God bless you. I'd like to remind you, Father's Day was last Sunday. Everyone celebrated. We also celebrated Loki. But our own grand celebration comes up this Sunday.